Hi everyone, it's John. I don't have a book review for you today or a poetry reading or anything along those lines. But a few days ago, a friend of mine here on BookTube by the name of Peg, who runs the channel The History Shelf, did a tag by the name of the Book Recluse tag, or the Recluse Book Tag, answered all four questions, and of course she had to throw me for a loop when at the end of the video she tagged me. Um, according to the YouTube stats on my channel, I have about 290 videos I've done over the past seven and a half years. Not a single one has been a tag video. But for everything, there is a season, right? So I figured for the first time ever on this channel, I will do a tag video. Also, Pig, I was the only person take to uh, Pig tagged. So I figured that um, she must uh, really want to pull me out of my shell or something. By the way, this will remain four-letter word free. Just for Martine, I did hear her request off camera. Um, so, uh, no F-bombs or any other bombs. Um, I'm usually pretty good when I make videos, but it's just other venues where I'm not so great. All right, so, as they like to say, and now for something completely different. The Book Recluse Tag. And I will leave a link to Pig's channel. Um, I, th I think everyone and their mother has already done this by now, or will be doing it soon. Um, I'll leave a link to her channel and the four questions below, in case you're interested. The first question says, what do you look for in the Ultimate Bookstore in under an hour? A lot of the answers I've seen to this seem to just seem to re-ask re the question, and what do you look for in a bookstore? <laughs> well, that's not exactly the way the question was asked. So if I had the ultimate bookstore, um, which I imagine to be a large one and only an hour, I would um, hit as many subjects as I possibly could. So I'll just give you a brief, and this is kind of boring for someone like me who has a lot of interests. It might be more interesting for people who have smaller sets of interests, but this just to me sounds like... Uh, I'm reading off a list of really boring things that most people probably aren't interested in, but I will um, list them anyway. So uh, some of them would include philosophy, art, sociology and anthropology, psychology, especially clinical psychometrics, history of all kinds, including intellectual, social, cultural, and religious, classic fiction, math, science, especially biology, chemistry, and physics, theology, religious, history, and um, uh, religion generally, political science, and literary and critical theory. So those would be the big areas. Of course, if I got to split all my time up equally, that would be about, what, three minutes in each section. So I don't, I'd probably have to focus, but... Um, uh, speaking of ultimate libraries, I did actually get to go to Portland once, Portland, Oregon, and uh, over the when I was in college, over the summer break of 2002-2003, I visited a really close friend of mine, and he knew that I had, um, you know, a thing for books, and he just uh, offered to, you know, during my seven or eight day visit, just drop me off in the morning. And he'd say, call me when you're done. And I think I spent six or seven hours there. I don't remember how many stories there are. I wanted to say there's three, but it was it was overwhelming. Needless to say, I mean, six hours was not nearly enough. And it was a, a really memorable experience. Um, I, I was disappointed by how much money I ended up spending. I don't remember, but it was too much. Um, Question number two, who is your favorite reclusive character or novel with a reclusive, antisocial, or loner character and or a novel with an isolated or claustrophobic setting? Okay, so I have answers to both of those questions or all of those questions. Um, let me get my, my list out here. So 
uh, a reclusive or claustrophobic, antisocial, or loner character. Well, I'm not sure if I've heard anyone else list these particular titles, but uh, Stoner comes to mind. Um, <laughs> it's basically the story of a man, I think his name is John, his name is William, William Stoner. And his uh, quite lonely, average uh, life as an academic. Um, it's it's sort of bleak. There's there's not a lot redemptive in it. Um, it has been quite a while since I've read it. It's been six years since I've read it. But I remember it being kind of claustrophobic. And in fact, his attempt to enter academia in the first place was. Uh, his his attempt to uh, leave the world of his um, small town upbringing, but uh, if I recall things correctly, it doesn't really work out too well. So uh, a really really wonderful novel, pretty much universally praised, with with maybe a few detractors. I really enjoyed it, and uh, I think I think I reviewed it. I think. Maybe, maybe I didn't. Um, this one, I'm pretty sure I did. Um, this is The Confusions of Young Torless by Robert Musil. Um, Musil is probably better known for writing The Man Without Qualities, his gigantic, usually published in two volumes, uh, novel. Um, this is probably the other thing people know him for. Obviously not gigantic and very, very approachable. This is about a young boy who's sent off to German military boarding school in what would be the late 19th century uh, sort of Prussian Empire, and um, the horrible... Okay, so first of all, the, the environment that he experiences at school is very claustrophobic because it's very... Um, if you're familiar with the, the culture of military German society at the time, it's very um, aggressive, masculine, uh, repressed sexually. And that, the, the second part, or the, that third part, the, the repression really comes out. And the main character is, is the victim of a lot of physical and sexual aggression uh, on the on the part of other boys in the school. It's really it's really quite uh, an indictment of of that kind of education, but it's it's also very claustrophobic and um, and sort of choking to read because of the the violence that's in it. Uh, a novel that I started just about four days ago. Um, I'm only admittedly about a quarter of the way through, about 160 pages through the 650-page novel, but the first quarter of it, at least, is very, very claustrophobic and very um, closed in. This is uh, Sons and Lovers by D.H. Lawrence. The The very beginning of the novel. I'm trying to find out where in England it's set. Is it... It's it's set in a community of of, of men who were colliers, uh, coal miners basically, and their families. And the people who live there lead extraordinarily bleak lives. Um, really sort of on the edge of uh, society, sort of scraped by, and um, this this novel is just telling about one particular coal miner's life, whose uh, his name is Morel, and his wife, whose name is Gertrude, and their children. Uh, I guess as the novel goes on. It's more and more about the relationship between Gertrude, the mother, and one of the children, Paul. 
I haven't really seen Paul grow up yet. He's kind of an adolescent where I am now. But this feeling of the father is very, very violent, uh, verbally, emotionally, psychologically. And he takes it out on his wife and his kids. And I can only imagine living in a tiny, tiny house being the victim of someone who knows no other way to deal with his anger and his frustrations other than just yelling. Um, it sounds horrible. It sounds claustrophobic. It sounds, um, sort of just makes your chest tighten just thinking about it. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I'm sort of hoping it, it opens up. Apparently Paul becomes an artist. Um, Later in the novel, hopefully he can escape his 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 parents, especially his father. His mother has this really weird sexual um, relationship, would be overselling it, but it is a very, very unusual relationship with Paul. Um, she gets jealous when he starts dating girls. I mean, it's it's kind of it's kind of weird. Uh, needless to say, Freud will be mentioned in a in a good review of this, but uh, I'm not anywhere close done uh, close to done with it yet. Um, also, a few more that I don't have to hold up, but Austerlitz, uh, the novel by uh, Sebold, the the German writer. It it sort of gave me the opposite feeling. It it gave me the feeling of being alone in a vast world, which can maybe sometimes be claustrophobic in, in an odd way. But I remember feeling a, a sense of uh, anxiety reading it. Maybe it was because of all of the traveling and the wandering around that he was doing, but that would be one other example. And then two other examples by one author I have. Uh, I don't know if anyone's familiar with uh, John Foles. Um, I was a big John Foles fan in high school and college and a little bit afterwards. And two of my favorite novels of him, of his, are The Magus, which is which takes place mostly on a small Greek island where the main character falls under the increasing influence of this very mysterious guy by the name of Conscious. Um, I know the, the name is sort of heavy-handed and cheesy, but um, he, he arrives there, I think, to be an English as second language teacher or something, again, on this small Greek island, so it's physically isolated, going back to the claustrophobia closed-in thing. And he finds himself increasingly under the spell of Conscious, who is this very weird uh, guy who lives in a huge mansion. It's kind of gothic and weird, and um, I, I recommend it if you were uh, at all interested in in that description it's um it's it's very nerve-wracking and anxiety inducing to read for me and then something maybe that's even worse <laughs> is his novel i think it's his first novel called the collector it's a novel in which john Foles writes a the story of a girl a young woman who has been kidnapped by a stalker of hers and a lot of it just takes place in this stalker's basement or cellar while he holds her captive and um the it i mean needless to say it's probably the most uh environmentally uh claustrophobic and, and reined in of, of all the ones I've listed. But I tried to include a number of different kinds of claustrophobia. So, I mean, you get, you get a sense of, of, you know, not just physical, uh, containment, but also other kinds like intellectual containment, which you would certainly see in 
something like this or uh, something like stoner. So I just wanted to cut, touch on all all kinds because I think uh, that uh, you can have more kinds of it than just physical uh, closeness or or uh, um, can, containment. So uh, question number three with a book. Uh, with a week with no obligations, uh, what would you like to read? So uh, these would probably all take me more than a week, but I'll list them anyway since I can write my own questions, right? I guess everyone else answers their own questions, so I'll answer my own. Um, each of these would take me much more than a week, but they are ne nevertheless important reading projects that I would eventually all like to finish and complete. This is the first one. It's uh, Yaroslav Pelikan's Complete the Christian Tradition. This just happens to be the first volume, The Emergence of the Catholic Tradition, from 100 to 600. But uh, this is available um, from Chicago. Um, and uh, like it says, this is volume one. It comes out in five volumes, which brings you all the way to... Uh, the 20th century. So this is this is the uh, you know Roman Empire, fall of the Roman Empire, and very 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 early Middle Ages, obviously. Um, I have them all packed away in a box, ready to read. I didn't want to get all uh, five of them out, but I would love to um, get those read eventually. Next would be, I did get all of these out because they were conveniently all in the same place. Let me see if I can hold them all up. Um, it would be the Complete Dance to the Music of Time series by Powell, by Anthony Powell. As you can see, the, the beautiful uh, Nicolas Boussin paintings right there, the upon, of eponymous name, also called uh, Dance to the Music of Time. Um, and it basically tells the story of English society in, uh, is it the interwar years between World War I and World War II? Each of these four, um, so there's four books here, but each one has three novels in it. So it's actually 12 novels, but this is the most popular way that they're published as a set of four physical books. So that would be something I would love to finish as well. And then there is this dusty book. Still dusty even after spring cleaning. Um, the Life of Picasso. This, I just got one because I didn't have them all lined up nicely on the bookshelf. This is just the triumphant years, 1917 to 1932, by John Richardson. But I believe the entire thing is either four or five volumes. And since John Richardson died, and it was either 2018 or 2019, at the time of his death, he had not released the last volume. So it remains to be seen whether we will get to see the last years of Richardson's versions of Picasso's life. Um, it would be nice if he could get some research associates or something together. Um, well, he's not going to get them, obviously, because he's dead. But if his research associates would cobble together something approaching um, his notes or uh, a book, of the last years of Picasso, just to finish off the project so it can be a nice, complete work, uh, life's work, would be wonderful. But if that's not the case, we still have volumes. So I think it's either four or five volumes long, so without it, it we'd still have one through three or one through four. Um... But these are, um, you know, on the order of around 600 pages a piece. So with at least four of them, we're, we're looking well north of 2,000 pages. 
but uh, an immersive biography of uh, someone like this, which has plenty of, it's not all text, there's actually quite a bit of um, art in here too, black and white photos and uh, of his life and of his work. So that would be uh, another thing I needed probably an entire summer to uh, knock out. And question number four is, what books do you, or what more, what books would you actually be reading? Well, um, I usually don't tell myself I want to read X, Y, and Z and then go read other things. So I'm pretty disciplined. If I set myself up to read something, I can usually start it and finish it. If something doesn't hold my attention, I rarely, rarely drop a book. I might not finish one or two books a year, but I try to be very open-minded and disciplined about if I start something to finish it. So, um, but as far as what I read, I don't make, you know, TBRs. I don't, I don't do that because I have too many things that interest me and my interests change. Um, you know, I, I can't plan 30 days ahead unless maybe I'm, I'm reading a book with someone else, which I will be next month. And I'll be putting out a video of that, of who it's with and the book itself. So if anyone wants to join along with us, you're more than welcome to. Um, so those are my answers for the recluse book tag. I don't have anyone to tag because, well, I'm not really in the habit of tagging anyone. And plus, I think everyone I watch on a regular basis, uh, with maybe a few exceptions who aren't coming to mind, have already done it. So um, now that this book is, now that this video is 22 minutes long, of course it is, I'll, uh, I think I'll shut things down and go get some work done. It's Tuesday, for goodness sakes. Peg and Martine, I just want to say thank you for uh, thinking about me and, and reaching out and asking for my opinions, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Peg and Martine and everyone else. Bye.